The five seniors missing from the Sunset Lodge have been found. After stealing a Winnebago, the group set out on a journey that would take them from Dawson Creek to the Lionsgate Bridge in Vancouver. We didn't steal the Winnie. It belonged to my son, who was over in Europe on vacation. It might have happened over 10 years ago, but I still remember it like it was only yesterday. Yeah, a group of us from the home drove Abby to Vancouver so she could throw Harry into the Pacific Ocean from the Lionsgate Bridge. Seems Harry worked on the construction of the bridge and it was his last wish. I could understand. We talked about the trip for weeks, but we had to make sure not to get caught. So I planned it just like a military operation. I knew Thornhill ran a tight ship and would never have approved of the trip. Has anyone seen Mr. Williams? He's gone and ordered himself another balloonogram. Mrs. Cairns, you've got to stop feeding the birds. How many times have I told you they're not real? You're probably all in on this, aren't you? Listen, could you guys please give me a hand? Thornhill's on vacation this month, and he's left his daughter in charge. It's a madhouse, so if you see Mrs. C feeding the birds again, please stop her. Did you hear that? Thornhill's on vacation. It's the perfect time for the trip. So we stick to our plan and leave today? Are you guys sure you want to go through with this? Don't want to get you into any trouble. We all want to go. Kirk's right. It'll be wonderful to get out of here for a couple of days, and we've got everything we need. Now let's go back to our rooms and get ready. I'll head over to my son's place and pick up the Winnie. When I get back, I'll park it in the side alley. At 12 o'clock sharp, leave your rooms and walk out the side exit. Don't look back. No one will see you going. I've got that covered. This mission of yours has made my blood boil for some action. If I wasn't stuck in this goddamn wheelchair, I'd be going along. Abby, are you ready? Is everything all right? What happens if I have second thoughts? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it, won't we? I guess we will. Let's just hope we make it in one piece. Oh, we'll be fine. Dick has it all planned. Williams, I can tell you how grateful we are that you agreed to help us out. Well, what are we waiting for? Christmas? Let's get this show on the road. need that bit about throwing Harry off the bridge. Abby, it's the reason we're going. Da -da 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 -da. Lunch time, Nurse Conway. known William since the war. And I could always count on him to help out when needed. She's a little run down. We'll be lucky to make it out of town. You have a better suggestion? It's cute. Look, it just needs a good cleaning. We'll stop somewhere along the way. We washed the whinny and hit the road on what would turn out to be a journey of rediscovery. To be free. Oh, don't get me wrong. The sunset lodges our home. It's just most people back there are waiting to die or win the jackpot of bingo, which could kill them due to the excitement.
It's about 730 miles. No, it's 740 miles to Vancouver. Do we do the driving by towns or by miles? Towns or miles? Well, it's going to take us 12 hours to get there. Do we break the driving by, by so many miles or do we drive until we get to a prearranged town? Why don't we just drive until we get tired? That should get us at least an hour away from here. I think we should stick to our plan and drive to Quinell tonight. That's a good idea. For God's sakes, Edna, you've got the map upside down. Oh, my. Once on the road, we were free. No one to tell us what to do, no rules. We were free to do whatever. As long as we took our medication on time, we'd be fine. And with this freedom came adventure. Stop! <coughs> she needs help. Having trouble? Could you give me a lift into town? My truck died. You oh. shouldn't be out here alone in your condition. I'm on my way to the hospital. Oh, mom. Can you come, come wait, up, no wait, do it this way, come on, come on, up, good girl, wait, can you get, oh, good girl, good for you, oh, oh, oh my dear, oh, sit down, love, that's, uh, oh, girl, that's girl, good let's get your coat, oh, get a cushion, right. where's your husband? He's at the hospital. That's like the woman I read about in the Enquirer. Her husband drove 90 miles to the hospital before they realized she wasn't even in the car. <laughs> no, no, no. My husband's a doctor. He's on shift this morning. I'm a month early. Don't you worry, dear. We'll get you to the hospital in time. Someone tell me a story. Take my mind off of things. My mother used to tell me funny stories about when she was in labor. There's nothing funny about labor. There's only one thing more painful, and that's raising the kids. I was in labor with my son for over 40 hours. 40 hours? Shit, I can't wait 40 hours. Did you hear that? Yes. I'm talking to my baby. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm out of control. Oh, don't do that. I will if I want to. You've got to stop pushing. Oh. You're not ready yet. Birth and death. Who the hell's ever ready for it? All I know is I'm going to have this baby back here if it's the last thing I do. That's fine. Now you've got to stop pushing. I push. <laughs> Thank God men don't have to go through this. That's why he invented kidney stones. There's the hospital. As we drove up to the hospital, I noticed a change in all of us. We had something to do. Code red for west north. Code red for west north.
someone you know. Someone I knew in the war. We're all dying, aren't we? Yes, Dick, that we are. Why does it have to be so sad? Oh, but it doesn't. Some cultures celebrate death. My friend Mary Irwin had a wake, and that's the way I want to go. When I die, I want a parade with floats and some clowns and, and maybe even a marching band. Not me. I want to go on a sunny Sunday afternoon, someplace green. Everything's fine. Margaret's in the delivery room. Someone you know? Someone Dick knows. He doesn't look so good. He's dying. You know, it's the one thing in life we're guaranteed. We all know it from day one. And that is that we're all going to die one day. Why do you think it's such a big surprise when it happens? Well, here you are. Margaret had her baby. Oh. They just wheeled her into the delivery room and pop, out it came. <laughs> Tell me, what did she have? A girl. Someone you know. Someone Dick knows. Uh, why don't you head back to the camper? I'll only be a minute. I could stay with you if you'd like. Thanks. I'll, I'll be fine. Let's go and see Margaret and the baby on the way out. Well, wait till you see it. It's so small and cute. And wrinkled and pink. Life goes on. And that's the other guarantee. Howard, I don't know whether you can hear me, but... I don't know. It's not on my shift, you know. You got a crash card on route. Okay, get the idea. Okay. I'm gonna have to ask you to step outside. There's nothing you can do. I need some help here. <sighs> Funny thing about death, it makes you think of life. It's really sad only a few people take a chance and really live life. I, I think death is life's little reminder not to forget to live. I think I'd like to try driving. You don't know how to drive. Yeah. Well, I can try. Do you have a driver's permit? She's a hundred years old, for Christ's sake. She doesn't need a driver's permit. Oh, thanks a lot, Abby. You know what I mean. Well, permit or no permit, I think I'd like to give it a whirl. Edna's orthopedic shoes made her a little heavy-footed on the gas, but it got us to where we were going a lot faster. Police now believe that the five had stolen a Winnebago and are headed to Vancouver. Anyone knowing the whereabouts are asked to call your local RCMP. We decided to stop at a small out-of-the-way place to grab a bite to eat. We knew they might be looking for us, and we didn't want to take any chances. No soup du jour, no seniors menu. Sandwich of the week is tongue on rye. Don't knock it till you've tried it. Now, do you have any idea what you want? 
I'd like a hamburger with raw onions and a side of chips. No, you won't. You know what that'll do for your ulcers. Rose, one burger won't hurt him. Let's have anything we want. I'll have the roast beef, Yorkshire pudding and gravy, and I'd like that with fresh frozen peas, please. Wait a minute. You do have fresh frozen peas, don't you? Just one minute. Well, slap me, silly. Just my I know who you are. I recognize you guys. Don't tell anyone about us. We just want to have something to eat and get on our way. I'll just tell the cook. I won't tell anyone else. He thinks I sit around here all day making up stories. Like that time I saw Elvis. What a day that was. We had an all-you-can-eat buffet back then. It was late. The king walked in, took one look at the buffet, and fell in love. I read somewhere that he loved buffets. I find this hard to believe. I think I'd like to try pizza. Pizza? This is a hamburger joint. I guess we'll be on our way. Sit! You're not getting away that easy. Not to worry. This will only take a moment. They must be looking for us. Maybe we made the morning news. Did you hear that, Harry? We made the news. It's probably a case of mistaken identity, but we shouldn't take any chances. Why don't we pick up some food at a grocery store and cook it in the camper? That sounds like a lot of fun. Let's go, then. Nothing better to do than sit around here making up these crazy stories all day. I mean, first it was Elvis, right? Last week, Madonna. Who's it gonna be next week? Liz Taylor, the fat years? You gotta believe me. The five old actors from that movie Cocoon were sitting right over there. We started calling ourselves the Unstoppable Senior Five until a downpour made us pull over. Seemed like it was never gonna stop. Wonderful thing about the Winnie, though, it was our little hotel on wheels. Only drawback was Edna had a gastro problem that at times made life difficult. <laughs> Did you know the Lion's Gate is 5,000... Uh, yeah, 5,978 feet long? That's impressive. Doesn't look like it's ever gonna stop. It always stops. Eventually. Hey, this reminds me of the time I was stuck out in a minefield and... That isn't going to be another one of your stories about how you and Williams won the war single-handedly, is it? This is a good one. Like the last one? Dick, go ahead. We love your stories. Well, I was stuck manning this minefield outside a car. Didn't want any of my men stumbling across it and getting themselves killed. I was stuck in that field for two whole days waiting for backup. You know what the worst part of it was? I was waiting for a letter from my sweetie. I'd asked her to marry me the last time I wrote to her. Oh, Waiting for the letter was driving me crazy. Then I got word I was to stay there three more days before relief would arrive. I was going batty. That's when Williams turned up. My letter had arrived and he went AWOL from camp to get up to me. What a guy. He hands me the letter, I drop it, and a gust of wind blows it into the minefield. Oh, my. I don't know what the hell came over me. Maybe it was all that waiting. Maybe I lost my mind. The next thing I knew, I was running out into that minefield, chasing that goddamn letter. Were you hurt? 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 Damn right I was her. It was a Dear John letter. <laughs> oh. uh, Kirk and I met during the war. Yeah. I was in the war when I met Rose. That's what I said. Must have been so romantic. It was. It was at a Halloween dance. I decided to go to the Halloween dance. He loves to dance. I'm no Fred Astaire. 
But I'm pretty light on my feet. Even with combat boots on? Oh, especially. He was so handsome in that uniform. I looked out over the crowd, and there he was, dancing cheek to cheek with a beautiful woman. My sister Arlene. That's the oldest line in the book. It really was his sister. <laughs> da da da. What are you humming? I can't remember the name of the song. I'm always forgetting things. Can't remember one day from the next. Well, when you're young, you don't here, remember? You're just too busy looking ahead. So let's be young and forget about remembering. I think we should pull over for the night. Good idea. Where should we put this thing? We just need to find a well-lit parking lot somewhere. That's the pleasure of this baby. Wherever you pull over is home. Before Janet got sick, we used to head out with the old Winnie almost every weekend. Didn't really matter where. Just as long as it got us out of town. Should be able to make it there by late tomorrow if everything goes all right. Oh, look. We're going right through Hope. I have a sister there. We should stop so that you can say hi. Oh, no, no. We'll be getting into Vancouver late enough as it is. We can make the time. No one would mind. Well, maybe on the way back. Dancing in the rain sure works up a thirst. Do we have anything to drink here? No, but we have a bar on our doorstep. I noticed that they have dancing tonight. It's been years. Let's go dancing. What do you think? Oh, I'd love to, Dick. Abby, you go ahead. Harry and I are going to read the Enquirer. It won't take me a minute to change. Sure. I'll be right back. Wow. Where the hell have you been hiding that? I just brought it along in case I needed it. For oh, what? You look fine. Thank you very much, Dick. Well, I'm ready to go now. Well, I'm not. You're gonna get all gussied up, so am I. I'll just be a minute. Hey, baby. Gin and tonic, neat, twist of lime, pinch of sugar, and two straws, please and thank you. I used to be quite shy as a little kid, and I said to my doctor, I said, Doctor, can you do something for my shyness? And he said, sure we can. 
He says, it's all in your genes and we'll be able to cure it. I said, great. I said, but doc, how come it took you so long to find it out? He said, well, because the shyness gene was hiding behind another one. <laughs> He's bad. You, uh, you can do better? Open mic every Thursday. Hundred bucks first prize. Hundred dollars, eh? I'm looking forward to seeing the bridge again. Just wish you were alive to enjoy it. Harry? 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 There you are. Love me not stay tomorrow. Count on it just today. Wrap your joy in it, minute by minute, and treasure the memories and store them whole. Love is just yours to borrow. Promises fade away. So give your heart gladly, but won't lose it sadly. Love just. I forgot the words. It's been a long time since you've sung in public. But I know that song. You should have given me a minute. The words would have come to me. I'm just trying to help. <laughs> well, next time, wait till I ask. Listen to the sound of the train. Sounds like it's getting close. Really close. Hey, oh, you guys. Being the mysterious woman that she is, changed her mind about stopping and seeing her sister. It seems that they hadn't really talked in over 40 years. She didn't want to go into details, but she said something about her sister disowning the family. Edna was doing the right thing. Never wait until it's too late.
Can I help you? Oh! <laughs> Edna! Hello, Kate. How are you? Your sister's going to be so surprised to see you. When was the last time? That was Mother's funeral. Of course. Look, honey, it's Edna. And what did we do to deserve this visit? Iris! Oh, it's all right, Kate. I didn't expect to be greeted with open arms, but... I was hoping we could put the past behind us before it's too late. Don't you think it's already too late? Well, uh, I just stopped by to say hi, so if that's what you want, I'll be on my way. Good. We insist that you stay for dinner. What? When are the two of you going to grow up and start behaving like the old ladies that you are? This has been going on for over 60 years now, and I won't have it anymore. Edna! You're staying for dinner. And Iris, you're going to cook it. Friends? Oh, yes, we're on our way to Vancouver. You and your friends are staying for dinner. Yes, but we wouldn't want to put you to any trouble. Well, you're here. Might as well stay. We had a really great dinner. And the evening was relatively tension-free until Kirk, the brain surgeon, made a startling discovery. Did you and Kate buy this place together? Yes. We knew we wanted to give farming a try. Talked about it for a couple of years before we started looking for a place. Once we had our minds made up, there was no stopping us. It was either the farm or kids. The way you talk, you two sound like you're married. What? <laughs> what did I say? That's okay, Kirk. Most people wait to talk behind our backs. Gives them something to live for. Iris and I are lovers. Would you care for some cake? No way. It's good. I made it myself. I don't believe it. I did. You don't look like lesbos. What does a lesbo look like? I don't know. I, I never really met one before. Well, I doubt that. <laughs> Kirk must have said the word lesbo a hundred times that night. But Kate said Kirk's childlike innocence was refreshing and took no offence. And they invited us to stay the night. Edna was reluctant at first, but then she agreed to stay. Well, it was nice of Iris and Kate to put us up for the night. <laughs> How about that dinner? I'll bet you I put on ten pounds. <laughs> they seem like a nice couple. Nobody will believe us back home. Believe what? That we had dinner with two real lesbos. Those dishes were hard work. What do you say we have a drink? Sounds good. Good. It'll help us to sleep. Right. To God for giving us one more day on this planet. I'll drink to that. That's strong. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> yes. May I come in? Well, that depends. If you've just come to make excuses for disowning the family, then forget it. Why I disown the family? Oh, I don't go along with this gay stuff, but it was no excuse to run away. Didn't run away, for Christ's sake. Oh, you could have stayed around and explained. Explain? <laughs> when Father found out about Kate and me, he promised he'd kill her if she ever laid a hand on me started yelling how it was disgusting and sinful. Well, it is. And what he was willing to do to stop it wasn't. What about the shame that would bring to the family? Well, so you and Dad didn't see eye to eye, but that was no reason to lose contact with the family. I tried. I love Big Ben. <laughs> <laughs> country myself. Oh, Iris is the country fan. Line dances once a month. 
down at the community hall. <laughs> Harry liked to tap down. Tap down? <laughs> Every one of them returned unopened. As long as he was alive, there was no way he was going to allow me to have any contact with the family. So after he died, what stopped you then? Why was it up to me? What about you? All my life, I've been fighting for my rights. And I don't mean extra rights. I mean my right to be the person God planned me to be. Oh, I don't think God had anything to do with you being a homosexual. So it's the devil's work, then? I didn't say that. What did you say? That you choose. <laughs> choose to be pointed at and called names. To be turned away from housing. Lose jobs. To live in fear that something could happen just because we're gay. Every day, my people are being discriminated against, beaten up, even killed. Do you really think that's what they would choose if they had a choice? Harry was a man of many surprises. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, here's, here's to Harry. Yes, Harry. Did you pick one up? Jim. You cheated. <sighs> You've won the last six hands. You're not that good, even when you're that good. <laughs> Did you know that the Lion's Gate Bridge is three thousand four hundred yards of cable with two something or other, I don't know. No. Oh, yes. Let's drink to that. Oh, <laughs> Rain sounds like a river. If you close your eyes, you can pretend we're on a riverboat traveling down the Mississippi. glass of freshly squeezed OJ. And some freshly brewed coffee. Eggs, bacon, and hash browns. Abby, fresh eggs. We went out to the coop and got them ourselves. They were still warm and I cracked them. Oh, Abby, you should have seen the sunrise this morning. It was breathtaking. And the air was fresh and crisp. Even milked the cows. 
fed the goats, put the sheep out. You guys did it, didn't you? Abby. Good morning. Kirk. What? When I woke up this morning, I didn't know who you were. We'll be, we'll be all right. We're almost in Vancouver. Rose, you're not to worry about me. We'll be able to handle this. And I promise you, Rose, I'll be here to help you. I've had one of the very best teachers. And when things get rough, we'll just dance. What if I forget how? I'll lead. a stranger around here now. We've wasted too many years. Let's not waste any more. Now, I want you to think about what we talked about last night. Oh, I have. I'd love to come for Christmas. Then it's settled. Christmas on the farm. You could even bring the old man. Be good for him. Did you and Harry ever go back to Vancouver to visit the bridge? We almost did. In 75, Harry was reading the paper and came across this story about how a bridge worker accidentally fell over the side. It seems the cable he was working on was too heavy and it dragged him over. He hung there 135 feet above the ground until they got him down. Was he hurt? Oh, not as much as I'm hurting now. Must be nearly 20 years or more since I tied one on like that. <laughs> what were you two drinking? Vodka. My, my. Vodka was Harry's drink. Where's Harry? He's here somewhere. Harry! Harry! Stop! You've got to pull over! What's going on back there? Oh, Harry can't find Harry. I think I forgot him back at the farm. You've got to pull over and turn around. Oh, did I forget him? Pull over now! As soon as we get to the next exit. I'm so sorry. How do you expect me to take care of you if you're not here to help me? Damn it, Harry. For years we had everything planned. We talked about what kind of funerals we wanted and, and what we wanted done with our ashes. We even paid for it. I just never thought Harry would go first. Abby, what are you doing with a jar of olives in your bag? Oh, oh no! <laughs> there you are. How did you get in there? We weren't sure what would happen once we got to the bridge. Abby was never without Harry, and we knew it would be very hard for her to let go.
Once in Vancouver, we knew our journey was coming to an end. And as we made our way through the busy streets toward the bridge, not much was said. We knew this was going to be very hard for Abby. And as the fog began to roll in, we knew she was going to have trouble letting go. Because Abby was our very dear friend, we followed close behind to give her our support. This looks like a fine place. You know, Harry, I never was one for long goodbyes, so let's just get this over with. But when the time for letting go is here, it's simple. I think it's because you never really do let go. The five seniors missing from the Sunset Lodge have been found. After stealing a Winnebago, the group set out on a journey that would take them from Dawson Creek to the Lionsgate Bridge in Vancouver. 